Conversation, follow the podcast today. Welcome back. The national cybersecurity strategy includes five pillars that the authors of the strategy say are designed to, quote, build and enhance collaboration. Two of those pillars could be absolute musts for collaboration. John Powell's area vice president for U.S. Department of Defense for Splunk. John, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. Pillar one is defend critical infrastructure. What are the collaboration opportunities and maybe the collaboration musts for that one? Yeah, so I, I think it really revolves around obviously the partnership between the government and industry to, you know, to, to secure industrial control systems. I mean, that is really a big factor right now um, with aging systems and um, software that's not designed to be network centric. You, you have siloed information. How do we connect that all? How do we create a resilient security posture around it? Uh, how do we help the government, uh, you know, protect the electrical grid? How do we help them, uh, you know, uh, do the things that they need to do to ensure that if we got involved in a conflict with a, a foreign nation, that, uh, you know, we're securing the, the things that keep things running here. You know? I've noted over the last 15 years that just about every government official, whenever they talk about cyber in virtually any context, references 85 to 90 percent of the critical infrastructure in the country is in private hands. Does that make the job of the government, does that make the job of the cyber professionals in industry that work with the government, does that make their job more difficult or easier? Um, I, I think it, it makes it challenging, right, because of what you pointed out. It really is, how do we connect player A with player B with player C? So you've got the government on one hand, you've got the Dominion Powers and the, the infrastructure companies on one hand, and you've also got the cybersecurity industry on the other side, the software machine that's there to help provide these services and products to help secure those things. So it can be, it, it will be challenging, you know, and it's, um, it, it's always a matter of who's willing to step up and who's willing to spend money. You mm -hmm. know, that's one of the big things. When collaboration works among all of those stakeholders that you just described, how does it work well? You know, I think it's I think it's a propensity to take some some risks, right? And uh, you know, reach out to private sector to and say we need help. Like, help us figure out how to do this. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, one of the big things is openness. But again, I think it's you know, getting private industry to invest money in the things that the government's asking for. You know, that's a good example. Of that is you know, cloud services, right? The government said, hey, we have rules and regulations about what we need from you in order to buy your products, invest money, you know, and, and do these and we'll, we'll buy them for you. And that's, that's when it works the best is when the, the companies put that effort forward, invest money in products and services that are specifically designed for the government. And then the government obviously steps in and, and procures those and uses them for the purposes that they're intended. The other pillar where collaboration seems like a must is pillar three, shaping market forces to drive security and resilience. And you talked about resilience <laughs> in the regards to the first pillar. Does everybody have the same definition of resilience to, to as a starting point? It's a new term, term, right? It's a new term that the government uh, has started using. It's a new term that my company started using. Uh, I think the big one with pillar three is something that's been in the news and it's been a, you know, a lot of concern to uh, the software industry, which is really an S-bomb, uh, similar to what you get uh, around the supply chain issues around computer hardware, right? The government needs to know, hey, was part of this made in an adversarial nation? You know, uh, where was this assembled? Uh, you know, the chip shortage I think we've had recently has highlighted that. And so, so now the government's saying, hey, step up. If you've got development efforts in China, let us know. Like, we need to know that, right? Uh, and that's really what the SBOM is designed to, to address. Um, going to be difficult uh, for industry and government around the, just like you said, the collaboration to make that come to fruition, but it's important. You know, the government needs to know if foreign actors are contributing to the software that they're buying. I mean, because as you've seen before, you know, they, nation, foreign nations can put bugs, can put malware into a production version of software and exploit that you know, within the, within inside the government's networks. Uh, less than 30 seconds left. What do you think you and your colleagues in industry can do to help the government fulfill all five of these pillars in the cybersecurity strategy? I think one of the big things is, and I've seen this over, you know, my 25 years of working with the government, we, you've got to understand the language that the government uses and, and the requirements that they have and build the products to suit those needs. Rather than 
hey, I'm big industry, I'm gonna come in and shove my agenda down your throat and what I need you know, from you, we've gotta to listen to the government and do what they're asking us to do so that we can help them become more resilient. John Powell, thanks very much for joining thanks. me. It's great to have you on the program. Appreciate it. You can find a link to the National Cybersecurity Strategy and read more about executing at fedgovtoday.com. Up next, special operations in the air and in space. FedGov Today will be right back.